Hello everyone, we're doing a bit of a follow-on from the week of using a Raspberry Pi. So Miss Quids tried to use a Raspberry Pi as a desktop computer for a week. And what kind of happened, we, we recorded this in advance. So this was about six days in advance. And then some of the issues we were discussing in the videos, people were suggesting comments or giving comments of how to resolve the issues. So that was, thank, thank you for that. A uh, big one was DRM, which really does look a lot easier to solve with <laughs> Raspberry Pi OS. Mm. But then there was a comment of another distribution to try. And that was Twister OS. Now, I hadn't actually heard of this one, although I can see it's come from Raspberry NX. So I might have heard of that distribution in the older times. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, Twister OS. That seems to solve a lot of DRM issues, and it's got... Uh, Windows and Mac themes there available. So would you have liked to try that? I think I think we could it's do It's probably still. worth doing, yeah, to mm. see to see what the effect is. Sounds mm. interesting. Yeah, well, it's a Windows 10 theme. Oh, you use Windows 10 at work. So. Yes, I do. I'm fine. I I quite like Windows 10. That's yeah. all right. You don't want the Apple theme though. <laughs> uh, no. the thing the different the thing is is it would take me a lot of work to kind of get my head around it probably. Yeah. So, so we will try that out. But another thing that happened was Ubuntu Mate's beta was actually released after we had filmed it. <laughs> so, yeah, but we were then made aware of the um, desktopify scripts that Martin Wimpress had written. So we did manage to try that for the last day. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how Ubuntu Mate beta behaves and looks, really, compared to how we first thought of it. And I suppose kind of a quick sum up is that the graphics drivers are now available. So it's now got the hardware acceleration, so got proper graphics drivers, better rendering on the desktop. But the improvement, things are a little bit quicker. Mm. But I wouldn't say it's leaps and bounds over what we had. So I don't think we really lost. And from what you've seen, we've just been trying it. So I, I don't think it's... Yeah, cons yeah. considering that the experience that we had when I was doing this week on was that we started with um, Raspberry Pi OS and then going through um, Ubuntu Mate came three out of four in the mm. third out of the four in terms of the running order. And mm. we did find definite improvements going through each one. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it brings it a bit more in part to Lubuntu in terms of the kind of performance and being able to open things uh, so that's good um but yeah as quid said not a not a huge uh, increase in in performance but a noticeable one nevertheless yeah, i think my preference would still be lubuntu hmm. so i want to show the issue with the screen capture so we're recording the screen and it's using a lot of the cpu so it really distorts the view of the operating system but i want to capture some stills for comparison but anyway I've got the CPU and temperatures here. So the temperature is divided by a thousand and you get the temperature in degree C. One thing to mention is it's actually got proper installer this time. So we didn't have to faff around with the locales afterwards. First boot the image gave you all the options of setting username, password, locales, and it was just really easy. It took a little while to set up, but yeah. First boot was a bit confusing because I went and tested the GLX info and it said it was LLVM pipe, which means it's rendering off the CPU, which seemed weird because I'd just seen some video of Martin Wimpress showing this and it was doing the uh, the proper graphics rendering. But upon second boot up, we can see we got uh, vendors Broadcom, we've got OpenGL information there, V3D. So yeah, it's using the graphics card or what we could call the graphics card of a Raspberry Pi. And yeah, we've got OpenGL 3.1 with the Mesa drivers. Showing the Mate tweak tool, looking at the window manager, so I've selected the Marco with the adaptive compositing. I'm not doing a full review of this system, but I just wanted to mention, yes, you've got all the different panel layouts. So yeah, I've, I'll link to other videos that have got the full review of this. This is not a review of the desktop. This, in fact, it's a beta, so we're not even doing a proper review of it. It's more just the comparison to what we've seen. Trying to benchmark in tools, you can see the CPUs actually not really increase much when it's at full load here mainly due to screen capturing. So a comparison to a still shot is that you can see CPU usage is actually minimal. So the rendering here is coming out of the graphics card. 
Unfortunately, as a byproduct, the GL mark score is really low and the frames per second is very low. So it's closer to around uh, 300, 2 to 300 frames a second. Yeah, sounds reasonable. Unfortunately, compared to my main desktop, which is uh, 14,000 frames a second. <laughs> but your eye can't see 14,000. No. No. Was it? But between 30 and 60, I, I, I still argue is visible, but you said 30. Didn't you? Yeah, I seem to think it's more... I have the number 20 in my head that I think is the kind of minimum that the human eye, like, that that you can process. And anything mm. below that is just obvious. Yeah. So mm. probably 30 frames a second is a good number to go with. Mm. I've seen some movies or shorts that are 60 frames a second, mm. and I think the, the animation looks a lot smoother mm. there. But, this is the weird thing with Blu-rays. I don't want high resolutions. I just would rather see 60 frames a second over 8K, you know, 4K and 8K. Give me 1080 at 60 FPS. be a better improvement. Anyway, I've also shown the uh, temperatures here. You see the temperature has crept up from... It was 38, just switching on to 54. But again, we're, we're putting the system under high load here with the uh, recording. You know, I really do need a capture card. That would help the situation. <laughs> Conviction off the pie and strain the CPU. So the performance of the desktop is noticeably better compared to what we were used to before. So things are a little bit faster to load from opening up. Just obviously, again, with the impact from doing the screen capture, mm. but when we didn't have the screen capture on. No, I, don't know. I think at that point it felt like a normal system. Mm. Yeah. yeah. In the car, her file manager, which actually Martin Wimpress has taken on board the uh, naming of this and the searching. So we, we did learn that file as a search doesn't bring up the file manager. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the uh, so the screenshots here, I'll, I'll discuss this bit with Super Tux car later, but that definitely did not work right. And in fact, worked a lot worse than... Actually, I don't think we tried it with Ubuntu Mate, my mistake there, but we tried it with Lubuntu and that was... Mm. not playable but didn't look as bad as this mm. playing the movie playing some movies okay this webm video was very much dependent on the cpu in fact it seemed to be the case for yeah these other mp4 files i had as well not really making enough use of the hardware decoding there but it was actually playable but one observation the tearing i don't think we really tested this out before but i've got a a video there I like to use, that um, song on the left-hand side. It does a really good job of demonstrating tearing. It's quite bad on the Pi. Yeah. <laughs> quite bad. And this is without screen capturing. This is just, I'm playing the video with nothing else. Yeah, so if you were, if you were to go and look up that video yourself independently, we won't show it here for copyright reasons, but if you go and look up the song... Um, the first, the first kind of good few seconds of the of the video is is very kind of a lot of uh, flashing, um, and uh, yeah, that's a great uh, great test of whether you will encounter screen tearing. And uh, yeah, it's just really bad. Once you're past that point, it's not as bad, but still, it makes it makes a good chunk of the video quite unwatchable. <laughs> Don't watch if you suffer from photosensitive epilepsy. Yeah. It's, it's bad for that yeah <laughs> but a good test for screen tearing yeah <laughs> trying to watch a video on youtube now i realized a mistake we made before was showing a 60 frames mm. a second video um yeah quite bad idea that does drop a lot of frames on the pie but 30 frames a second doesn't drop as many and is actually far more watchable at 30 fps mm. versus 60 and i actually managed to watch a 1080 video at 30 fps mm -hmm. Can't capture it here, but 720 and 1080 were very much watchable. Yeah, and in fact, if we if we ha we had a look at the stats for nerds um, on that as well when we weren't recording and found that even for the 1080, we were hardly dropping any frames at all mm. in terms of the fraction of the total number of frames. So, I'm going on to gaming and yeah. Okay, this is a bit slower with the screen capturing, but I'm sorry, screen capturing is not the cause of this issue. It was like this without, and I don't know what what has gone on with Ubuntu Mate. Lubuntu was not like this, and it's the same architecture, so I don't know. It, it, it um, displays an error about missing a 
I think it was it a layer. I think it was yeah. in the picture. Well, I'll put the screenshot here. And, um, but yeah, it it's definitely something missing. And trying to run open the arena, nope. Mm. <laughs> Just quite ironic because I think Quake Three actually worked with the original Pi, mm. albeit with some tweaks and whatnot. I'm sure, it was Quake Three, which this is kind of based on. Uh, or free open source version of yeah this this just would not play I can read the bug report as well because it crashed <laughs> so I submitted the bug report as I should good citizen and all for capturing the webcam and recording at the same time GVC work GVC view worked but uh, cheese was an absolute fail uh, probably something to do with the compositing there and I think GVC view does interject and prevent the desktop compositing taking place, so it would reduce load there. Yeah, and due to popular demand um, on the last video where I was um, playing Mines or Minesweeper, um, I got a, I got a few compliments on my godlike Minesweeper playing. So thank you for that. Um, I used to play quite a bit of Minesweeper a few years ago, so. Um, that the kind of skills just don't leave you. So by uh, popular demand, I have played a game all the way through successfully. So we mm. might skip to the end and show the ending of that just so you can get the satisfaction of watching a completed game. So in conclusion, I can see this is a better experience than what we had originally with Ubuntu Mate. But is it a huge improvement over? I, as I said, I don't think it was. Mm. I can see where it still fails is under load and it, it really became evident with the screen capturing and, and even without the screen capturing you could still trigger the uh, high loading just by running a couple of things at the same time and it really does start to struggle and I'd say struggles more than Lubuntu did because I think your experience there was a lot better. It was better. good, yeah. Yeah. So I'm just trying to compare two lighter weight desktops. I'm sure it wasn't so bad under KD Plasma either, but you know, we didn't do a huge test with that in the end with Ubuntu. Yes, we did with Manjaro, and that was pretty much intolerable there, quite frankly. That was quite bad. We'll take a look at Twister OS and see how that compares. But that was a look at Ubuntu Mate 2004 Beta on the Raspberry Pi 4 8GB. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you all later.